Hello friends, it's Mal with Made by Mandy and Mal. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a kind of vintage inspired collage tumbler tutorial for you. I got this pack of little vintage like pieces at Hobby Lobby and I was inspired like right when I saw it to make a collage cup. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit that button down there as well. If you want to be notified every single time we upload a brand new video, which is every Tuesday and Saturday, be sure to hit that bell icon and you'll get a notification every time we post a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Everything I'm using will be linked in the description box down below as always. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoy. Let's go. We're starting with a 22 ounce slim from Makerflow. I've sanded it down, washed it with Dawn, and now we're going to base paint it. We're going to use Sensible Brown from Montana Colors, if you know, you know. And since I was touching it with my bare hands, I'm just going to spray it down with some 91% rubbing alcohol that I have in my spray bottle and just wipe down the surface of the cup so we're clean and good to go. I painted it here with the Sensible Brown. I'm going to let it dry overnight and then I'm going to go in and start on my collage. So I'm using Mod Podge. I am not a fan of Mod Podge, but it's great for this method, so I used it. I also used this brush that is specifically made for Mod Podge. I also used a couple different brushes, but you'll see what happens with that brush later in the video. <laughs> and then for all of the collage pieces, we're going to be using this pack from Hobby Lobby. I got this pack for like six bucks and it comes with 96 different like little vintage pieces. It's got some like ticket stubs in there, some stamps, like just old kind of cool vintage stuff. And when I saw this at Hobby Lobby, I was immediately inspired to make a collage. So we're not gonna use anything else. We're just using what's in this pack. And like I said, this has 96 pieces in it. So you could probably get at least two cups out of this in the same design, um, depending on the size of your cups, of course. But what I'm gonna do is just pour all of them out and then kind of go through and sort decide what I want to put on this cup and then what I want to save for a different design. I tried to pick a pretty healthy mix between big and small pieces. We are going to apply the bigger pieces first and then work our way down as we go in layers to the smaller pieces. So I'm gonna take that Mod Podge brush and just dip it in and then cover the entire surface of my tumbler with a pretty thin layer of Mod Podge. I'm working inside, so it's not super hot in here. The warmer your space is, the faster Mod Podge will dry. You don't have a super long working time, so just keep that in mind. If you wanna apply your Mod Podge partially, kind of as you go, that will work great as well. So I'm really just going to pick a random piece from my selection and place it down on the cup wherever I think it would look good. Um, there's no rhyme or reason or pattern or anything. That's what's so great about these collage cups is that you really can just like put something somewhere and it'll end up looking pretty good. I just tried to, for the first layer, put my biggest pieces down and kind of you know, twist them a little bit, make sure that they weren't all going in the same direction, they weren't all straight up and down, um, and that I didn't have too many big like square blocks of space. Um, and then I did use my vinyl scraper just to help me push down the edges. I'm not scraping over the images, I'm just kind of using that to push it down instead of my hands, but you can totally just use your fingers. So just going to keep going around the cup and placing these bigger pieces um, on the cup until I like what I see. And if you want to overlap images or you have some Mod Podge that's already dried, you can just take a smaller brush and tuck a little bit more Mod Podge in there to glue your image down and you'll be good to go. You can move on to the next one. These pieces are pretty thick, so you can layer them right on top of each other. You're not going to see too many like creases or lines or anything like that that you would normally get. And especially with this being like a vintage kind of old school inspired tumbler, I wasn't really concerned with any wrinkling or creases or anything because it just really adds to the whole character and vibe of the design. But if you do want to avoid any of that, you can do a thin coat of epoxy in between each of your layers. So you would just have to put down your images so that they aren't touching each other and then do a coat of epoxy and then you can start your layering 
just coding in between. So yeah, just going to keep putting these images down in random places until we've got pretty solid coverage. Once I had a lot of my surface area covered, I went through with a full coat of Mod Podge over the entire thing. And then I just let that sit aside about an hour to dry. This will just seal everything in. Um, my Mod Podge on the base had pretty much dried out at this point. So I was adding a little bit of Mod Podge underneath the image and then I would put a little bit over as well on top of the image so that it would stay down. Um, so once that started happening more and more, I just did a full coat of Mod Podge over the whole thing to seal everything in and then let it dry an hour before we moved on to our next layer. So now that our base layer with all of our big images is dry, we're going to start going in with some of the smaller images and I'm just going to fill in any of these blank spots that we have. Just going to apply the Mod Podge section by section, just wherever I want to put something. Um, and I'm just going to use the smaller to medium sized pieces of this. We'll do a whole nother layer with the smaller pieces before we go in with epoxy. Once we had all of our medium sized images in there, I went over with another full coat of Mod Podge and this was a, a relatively thick coat. We didn't glob it on, but I definitely wanted it to be substantial enough to really seal those images in. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to let this sit aside for another hour and then we'll be ready to go in with all of our tiny little pieces to fill in the rest of these gaps. For these smaller pieces, because they're so small, once I applied them with the Mod Podge underneath, I went right over them with a thin coat just to make sure that they were well adhered and that they weren't going to move around or anything. Um, just kind of like sealed them as I went, basically. And as you can see, I'm literally just like randomly picking something off my plate and putting it down. There was no pattern or plan or real theme other than like this vintage theme, obviously. but. Just feel free to have fun with this. If you wanted to do like a pack of scrapbook stickers or a pack like this that you have or anything like that, just put things where you feel like they'll go. Don't try to overthink it. Don't try to pre-plan it out or anything like that. It will always turn out best when you just have fun and go with the flow. So here's all of our little pieces applied. I decided to add one more little stamp because they were so cute. So then now that I've got all of these little things on here, I'm going to take my Mod Podge brush and seal everything in. And then this happened. A big chunk came out of my brush and I thought it was done, but then no, it decided to release another little bundle of its hair onto my cup. So I cleaned up all the hair and then I switched to these thick brushes that I got on Amazon and they work amazingly. So that Mod Podge brush went right in the trash and no, I didn't like Mod Podge for a reason. Anyway, I finished my coat, let it dry for an hour and then added one more coat of Mod Podge over this, let it dry a full 24 hours and then I was ready for my first coat of epoxy. You wanna make sure that you fully coat with Mod Podge and let it fully dry, because if you don't fully coat it, you'll get epoxy that seeps through your images and then it will look greasy and gross. And if you don't let your Mod Podge dry, your images will look foggy under epoxy. So it's really, really important that you follow both of those steps very carefully. So once I was ready for epoxy, I decided that I wanted to, of course, zest this up a little. So I took a little tiny, tiny bit of bright from Peachy Olive Glitters and then quite a bit of this pure pigment powder from PDB. This is my absolute favorite. It is beautiful. I literally want to put it on everything. So I mixed that up with about 30 milliliters of epoxy in this small mixing cup and it was a little bit too pigmented. So I ended up moving it to a little bit of a bigger mixing cup, adding more epoxy and kind of toning it down a little bit. So then once once it was mixed up, I just applied it right on the cup. Um, I think after I was done mixing all of this up and kind of diluting it down, I had about 45-ish milliliters of epoxy, and I think I put about 25 to 30 on this cup. So you don't want to apply too much epoxy, but you want to make sure that it's well coated. 
I also wanted to show you how I torch my cups. ALE Epoxy really, really likes the torch, so I'll usually just go right over the cup, let the flame touch the cup for one like full rotation of my turner, and that will pop any bubbles and it comes out totally perfect. So I'm gonna let this coat cure about six hours and then do all of my sanding and then go in with my final coat of epoxy and we'll be all done. So that is it for this tutorial. Here is the final result with the final coat of epoxy on the cup. I absolutely love how this turned out and I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think of this technique in the comments. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Love you. Bye. Bye.